Hey, I'm Cleo. I'm a longtime tutor and a test prep expert here with study.com. So today we're going to be working on the Praxis 5165 mathematics exam, um, and specifically talking about problems related to functions and calculus. So we have four problems for you, and we're going to dive in now. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so for our first problem, problem one, it says, which of the following is the result of f of x plus h of x? f of x equals 7x plus 2, h of x equals 8x squared plus 3x plus 5. So this is a function problem, right? It wants us to add these two functions, which really just means to simplify and combine like terms. So f of x plus h of x is going to be 7x plus 2 plus, I'm going to go down here to save space, 8x squared plus 3x plus 5. So as we simplify, uh, we have only one x squared term. So that 8x squared is going to stay as it is, 8x squared. Um, and then we have a 7x and a 3x. So those combine, 7 plus 3 is 10, right? So that gives us 10x. And then we have a 2 and a 5 which would combine to 7. So our answer should be 8x squared plus 10x plus 7, which looks like it's going to be this one. Excellent. All right, so number two, this is a log problem. So it says, for the equation b to the 4z equals 81, what is the value of z expressed as a logarithm of base b? So with logs, it's important to know how to move between logarithmic form and exponential form and back again. So... Um, the main thing to know, just off the top of your head, you got to memorize, is that log base b, so log base b of a, that's how we say it, equals c. That's log form. And that is equivalent to, in exponential form, writing a equals, a equals b to the c b to the power of c. So these things are the same. Um, so now if we look at what's given to us, b to the 4z equals 81. Is that in log form? No, there's no log written there. So that's in exponential form. So in exponential form, uh, b to the something power equals the outcome, right? So looking back at our exponential form, b, b is b, so b is b, to the something power, so the c power, so the 4z is our c term, equals 81. That's the output. So that's the A. So now our job is to take these ingredients and uh, these variables rather and uh, reconfigure them into log form. So we just have to say log base B of A equals C. So log base B, because B is B, log base B of A, our A term is 81, log base B of 81 equals C, our C term is the exponent here, so it's 4z. Log base b of 81 equals 4z. Okay, um, so that is a logarithm of base b, but it looks like the answers, um, uh, well, definitely we want to find z alone. Oh, we want the value of z expressed. Yeah, so we don't want 4z, we want z. So we need to divide that by 4. So just like normal division, we want to divide everything by 4. So our answer should be, z equals uh, log base b of 81 divided by 4. But looking at the answers, there's nothing that's like all over 4. It looks like they're doing it as a fraction. So dividing by 4 is the same as what? It's going to be the same as multiplying by 1 fourth. So I'm going to say 1 fourth times the quantity. This doesn't change. Log base b, log base b of 81. So that is this one here, answer choice C, 1 fourth log base B of 81. Great. So for problem three, um, it says use the graph below to answer the questions that follow. So it says the image above is the graph of a piecewise function. Cool. Um, if the limit of the function is determined as X approaches negative four, which of the following is the value of the limit? Well, let's see, where is X negative four? Do, 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 negative four on the X axis is right there. So as x is approaching negative 4 from the left side, from negative infinity, 
we're approaching, we're approaching, we're approaching. Um, it looks like the limit would be over here, right? Um, even though that's not the actual point. Um, uh, but if we're approaching from the right side, from positive infinity, the limit would be doo -doo 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 -doo, right around here. So in order to have a limit that exists, uh, the limit needs to agree from both sides. Um, so in this case, it does not agree. So the limit does not exist. That would be this one. For our last problem here, um, it says given function h of x equals negative 2 to the negative x plus 5. Uh, which the following is the behavior of the given function with respect to whether it grows or decays. So we want to know is this exponential growth, exponential decay, or neither. Um, in order to do that, we want to kind of get a sense of what the graph would look like, what its shape would be. Um, so we're going to have to just plug in some points and see what the output is and, and um, get a sense. So I'm going to make a little xy table. xy table. Okay. Um, I also want to point out this negative sign here doesn't really move with the two because it's not in parentheses. So whatever math we do here, the negative sign is then applied to it at the end. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so let's see. I'll put down a few x values. Let's say a negative 1, a 0, and a 1 to get us started. Okay, negative 1. If we plug in negative 1 for x, that would become negative negative 1, which is positive 1, plus 5 is 6. So 2 to the 6 and then we make that negative. So, hmm, well, 2 to the 8, uh, two, I'm sorry, 2 to the 3rd is 8, is what I meant to say. So 2 to the 6th is going to be 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 3rd, which is 8 times 8, which is 64. And then we make that negative. So that's going to be negative 64. Okay. Um, if we plug in 0 for x, that's going to be negative 0 is 0. So 0 plus 5 is 5. 2 to the 5th power Again, if we know 2 to the third is 8, that's 8 times 2 times another 2. So 8 times 2 is 16 times another 2 is 32. And then make that negative. And that's a negative 32. Okay. Um, positive 1. We plug that in. That's going to become negative 1 because negative x plus 5, which is positive 4. 2 to the 4, well, it's 1 power lower than 32, so it's 16. And then we make that negative. So that's negative 16. Okay, and then just for the sake of curiosity, maybe we'll do two more positive x's, <laughs> see what happens. So 5, uh, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, because anything to the 0 is 1, and then make it negative, so that's negative 1. And then 8, um, plug that in, negative 8 plus 5 would be negative 3, so negative 2 to the negative third power, let's be careful there, that's going to be negative to do, 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 negative 2 to the negative third power. Well, a negative exponent, we interpret this as 1 over 2 to the third. So 1 over 2 to the third would be 1 over 8, 1 eighth, and then it's negative. So this would become negative 1 eighth. So we're getting, we're still negative, but we're getting fractional. So it looks like as x is increasing, um, our y value is increasing, right? It's getting less negative. It might end up hitting a limit, but there's definite growth happening, it seems. Let's just sketch it out loosely, loosely. It does not have to be too fancy here. I'll just make a mark. Let's say this is, I don't know, I don't want to make this impossible to read. Let's say this is um, 20, negative 20, negative 20, 20. So negative 1, negative 64. Again, this is an estimate, but negative one, just a little bit, and then three of these. So boom, 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 something like that, okay? And then zero, negative 32. So zero, 20, not quite another 20, I don't know, call that that. Um, one, negative 16. One, a little bit this way, not quite the 20. So like that, okay? Um, five, negative one. So five, a little bit further over, barely there. And 8, a little bit further over, negative 1 half, so barely there. So loosely, it looks like our shape is kind of becoming like that. Oh, I went above the line, sorry. <laughs> Meant to go under the line, just don't have a lot of control. Um, so even if that's kind of evening out and hitting a, a bit of a, you know, a flat area, or almost flat, an asymptote, um, there's definite growth happening. So we're going to go with this one. Okay. 
All right. Thank you so much for doing those problems with me. I hope it was helpful. Um, so if you're looking for some more Praxis math problems um, or Praxis problems in general, you can check out our materials here. We have tons more videos. Or you can head over to study.com, and as a member there, you'll have access to hundreds more sample problems, as well as targeted instruction by category and topic um, and strategy to help you boost your score on, on uh, the day of the test. Um, in the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and like and subscribe if the video is helpful. And um, feel free to drop us some comments. Let us know if there are topics you'd like us to work on more specifically, um, or if there's anything else that you'd, um, you'd like some help with. So thanks again, and uh, happy studying.